This is the quick start video for your Hobie Mirage Passport, both 10.5 and 12.0. The quick start video is not a total replacement for your owner's manual. I'm only gonna cover the features and the assembly and adjustments that you would have to have done before your first outing on the water. An exciting change to the Passport line for 2021 is this newer drive. This is Hobie's Mirage Drive GT with kick-up fins. GT stands for our glide technology. All the more critical moving parts now have bearings. That's gonna reduce some friction and make pedaling a little easier and more efficient. The kick-up fins, if you do contact anything, these fins can break away. And then as you pedal, they'll flex and pop back forward into place. So less worry about contacting in shallow water or underwater obstacles. To assemble this drive, you're gonna to need to use a tool, an Allen key. It's a seven 30 seconds size. The bolts are here. So I'm gonna loosely remove a bolt. The, the pedal cranks, you're gonna to need to locate which is the left and which is the right. So as I look at this drive, the pulley is facing forward. Also the fins have a flat edge facing forward. So I'm gonna start with my right hand pedal and it's gonna look like that. It should also have an R on the pedal strap for right. To insert it, I'm gonna push down on this gray button. This is gonna work later as our adjustment. Push down. Slide it into place and then I'm gonna look through and just line up. You can move it along a little bit further. And the height, you'll know when you're in the right spot because that pin will pop back into place. And then go ahead and thread this bolt back into place. And when we get down toward the bottom, we just want to snug this bolt into place. If we go too tight, it will limit how easily we can use our adjustment feature. We'll repeat the same thing on the left-hand side and we'll just double check our strap and that we have the right pedal. Previous model years of the Passport came with what we called the Hobie Classic Mirage Drive. It looked a little different. It lacked the kick-up feature and the GT bearings, but you still had to assemble it the same way other than the tool required was a socket instead of an Allen key. And then when we're done, we'll just double check that these are pretty easy to move along and just make our adjustments to our pedal length. To insert the drive, we'll put it down through the well, press down, and the click you hear is our click and go system, and it's locked the drive into place. To unlock it, these latches, we pull them both back and then lift up. They'll click again, which is a reset. So they're ready to lock in the next time you press back down. To make adjustments to the length of our pedals, we can push on our gray button and move it whatever direction we need for shorter legs. We can pull it back closer toward the seat. And if I let go of the button, you can hear it click into place when we're in the right spot. Another feature to note is this little hanger strap on a bungee. And what this does, if I put it on one pedal strap, it pulls and forces the pedals to be locked and that forces the fins to be up flush. So if we are coming into the beach and we wanna ensure that the fins are up flat and they stay up, we can use this pedal strap. And if you need to make adjustments to this, you just can lengthen or shorten this bungee. Your seat back should come fully assembled. To attach it onto the boat, what we wanna do is move this lever out of the way, unlock it, put the seat back down, and then slide our lever back into place, locking the seat. We can roll this forward, and then our seat clip attaches to these black pad eyes. To make adjustments to the seat, you can sit in it, lean back, loosen these straps for a more reclined position, or tighten them to sit more upright. One thing to note, these hoops that are on the side of the seat, these are gonna be utilized when you're not in your kayak. If you wanna to get to a beach, take your seat out and use it as a beach chair. You can put your seat clips onto the seat here 
and use it that way. This is likely the way you'll find your rudder shipped and sandwiched in the cardboard will be a small owner's packet with some stainless steel screws. You wanna keep a hold of the screws because that's the way we're gonna install the rudder onto the transom of the hull. We recommend using a handheld manual screwdriver, a Phillips head, and you just kind of want to snug both these screws down into place. That's the top, and the bottom one you'll reach up from below. This white fiberglass rod is what attaches the rudder blade up forward to your rudder handle. So to attach it, we're gonna use this little thumb screw and I recommend putting the rudder down, making sure this thumb screw is loose, threading the rod through there. And you can even start to snug it up a little. And then what you're gonna do to align it is I'm gonna turn the blade so it's straight with the center line or the keel of the kayak and also make sure that your rudder handle is pointing directly forward. And then just snug this thumb screw up by hand. If at any point later in the season, you ever notice that you don't think your rudder handle is calibrated directly forward, you can do the same thing by lining up both the blade and the handle and making adjustments to this thumb screw. This is your two piece paddle. And to assemble it, we just bring the two halves together. This B button can be pressed in, and then I have three holes to select. I'm gonna use the middle, which is kind of our neutral, and then on the top and bottom of that, you have some options to feather the paddle blade. To assemble it onto the boat, I'll take this bungee, stretch it over the top of the paddle, and hook it onto the strap there. Up front, there is a bow carrying handle, just behind that, you have forward cargo storage with a bungee tie-down system. On the 10-5 haul, this area is gonna be a little smaller, but they both have a cargo area bungee that you can loop up and over your gear and snap back down. If you wanna get more creative, feel free. You can untie the bungee and loop it through, or you can use some carabiners to lock gear down as you please. This mount can be used for our Bimini sunshade accessory. On both sides of the boat, you have your mounting rails. These are really handy for mounting all kinds of accessories too. There's a little bungee here to hold a tackle box or similar tray here if you desire. This ghosted cutout is actually for what we call our map pockets, and those can be added for a little extra storage. Under seat, you have some storage here. So full disclosure, these two fittings are for a fish finder. Our marketing department took this boat testing and we did a photo shoot with this boat with Morgan on it. And that's what these are here for. If you're interested in any of our fishing accessories, Howie Stretch, one of my coworkers, did a complete series on the Passport, how to mount all his favorite accessories. And for every accessory has a detailed installation video. So you can check that out on our YouTube playlist or some of those installations are featured on the product support pages for the Passport. This is your eight inch hatch. To open it, we just lift up the lever, turn it 90 degrees, and we have access to the inside of the hall. If you look around in there, you'll notice that there's some closed cell foam. That's added buoyancy just to be safe if in the event water ever got in the hall, the boat wouldn't completely sink. We've actually put a lot of the foam in spots where if you were to stand up in the boat, it adds some strength. So it's best just to leave it where it is and not move that around too much. Here's a cup holder, your side carrying handles, and there's trays for storage on both sides of the seat. On each side of the boat, you have vertical rod holders. You have scuffers down here. They're mounted 12 inches apart, which is perfect for our plug-in kayak carts for transporting. The rear cargo area has this bungee system that can be adjusted up and over your gear and snapped down into place. Rear carrying handle and a drain plug right here. The 12 foot passport has this cutout that is for what we call our power pole, which is an electric anchoring system. 
That's it for this quick start video. If you end up with any other questions, you can refer to your owner's manual. You can go to hobie.com, find the support pages, search for your kayak model. There's quite a bit of information there. You can reach out to a, your nearest Hobie retailer. You can write to us directly. You can even comment on the video. Be safe on the water and enjoy your new kayak.